Good day and welcome back to Chemistry Videos. My name is Clarissa Sorensen Unruh and today we are going to do an introduction to organic. All right, and by organic I mean organic chemistry. All right, in terms of thinking about organic chemistry, really we have several delineations that we can make. And typically when we're doing organic chemistry naming or nomenclature at the beginning levels of chemistry, in general chemistry, we tend to think about um, kind of almost a delineation of a delineation, a subgroup of a subgroup to begin with. But really the most common way of thinking about organic chemicals is to separate them first into aliphatic and aromatic compounds. What aliphatic, oh, I should have an I in there, sorry, aliphatic compounds are, is this is an open carbon chain. So in other words, this is something that tends to be either a straight chain or perhaps even a cyclic hydrocarbon, um, but it doesn't have the specificity that an aromatic compound does. Aliphatic in this case, this would be something that has carbons, right, in this particular drawing that I have here, I have carbons at the end of every line and every juncture between two lines. And then I have H's around them. We'll learn that indeed the number of H's around each is based off of the fact that carbon continually makes four bonds around it. I'll talk about what that means. Okay. Okay, so aliphatic means that the carbons have some kind of bonding to one another that is such that you have basically an open, an open structure. Aromatic is very specific. It means that it has to be cyclic, it has to be planar, and it has to follow uh, Huckel's rule. In terms of looking at that, the most common aromatic compound tends to be something like benzene. Okay, so here's my benzene, here's the, my carbon at each juncture between two lines. Here are my H's. Okay. And what's true about aromatic compounds is that you basically need to have something that has, for the most part, we, this isn't true across the board, but for the most part, we have alternating double and single bonds in carbon chains, and it is very important that it's cyclic. Aromatic compounds are particularly interesting because they are extraordinarily stable. They're even more stable than most organic compounds, which are pretty stable to begin with. Okay, so they have a, an added stability to them. Why are they called aromatic? The reason why is because in fact, most things that smell or give flavoring are aromatic in some way, shape, or form. Okay, so that's the aroma, the wonderful smelling aromas is, is what we're talking about when we're talking about aromatic compounds. That's not true across the board. There are some aromatic compounds that smell horrible, but you know, you get kind of the point. Okay, in terms of thinking about this, right, aliphatic versus aromatic, obviously, since I have carbons and hydrogens up here, organic chemistry at its most basic definition is the chemistry of carbon. Why is carbon so particularly special? The reason why it's particularly special is because carbon has two things going for it. It is tetravalent. Tetravalent literally means that it has four valence electrons. But what that often translates to, for the rest of us, is that indeed, it means that carbon makes four bonds around it. That's pretty much true a great deal of the time. It's not exclusively true. There are things, times when carbon doesn't make uh, four bonds around it. There are times when carbon makes, has a lone pair, I mean, there are possibilities here, but those are much more, um, uh, they're much more rare. They're less stable than carbon making four bonds around it. So tetravalence is, for the most part, is gonna mean that we use 
this idea that carbon will always make four bonds. Okay, it's tetravalent and it can catenate. What is catenation? Catenation is this really fancy schmancy term which just basically describes what's happening here or here. Carbon has the ability to bond to itself and it can do that over and over and over again. Okay, and it in fact makes hugely long chains of where it has bonded to itself um, and these magnificent compounds. At last time I checked, or like, I don't know, long time ago when I started teaching, there were about 20 million organic compounds, maybe 10 million at that point. It was kind of fuzzy. Um, now, there are many, many, many more. So the amount of organic compounds that exist overall is on a hugely large scale compared to the inorganic naming that we talk about in general chemistry one, okay? So inorganic compounds versus organic compounds, there's a big difference between how many compounds we're talking relatively. All right, in terms of Thinking about these, this is only the first delineation. The vast majority of the time, at least in organic one, and in general chemistry, and intro for sure, you're really going to think about aliphatic compounds. This is where um, our naming lies. This is where we spend a lot of time. So if you're taking intro chem, if you're taking gen chem, and you're talking about organic compounds, if you're taking ochem one, organic chemistry one, or organic and biochem, any of these courses are gonna spend a great deal of time talking about aliphatic compounds. In organic two, right, so in ochem one, you talk about aliphatic, in ochem two, you talk about aromatic more of the time. And in, um, for aromatic, you're also gonna spend a huge amount of time on them in biochem, if you have the higher levels of biochem you're gonna spend a lot of time on aromatic compounds because they are ubiquitous throughout the biological world. So that's why you spend a lot of time on them. Okay. All right, until we see each other next time, I bid you adieu.